All right, it's half past. I think we'll get started. So my name is Hannah Okard Axelson. I'm a product manager at Acurex. I'm joined by my colleague Vivek Matthews, who will be helping answer questions. So please do use the live chat function um, to ask questions. We're going to be demoing our product Chain SMS, which is a desktop-based um, application that integrates with Emus Web, um, and just going to show you some basic functionalities of it, but then also how to make the most of of, of what we have to offer. So let me just switch my screen here. And, um, all right. Um, so in front of you, you should see Emus Web, which is who should be very familiar with. Um, on here, the upper right, we have a little toolbar, which is the Acurex toolbar. Um, you can drag it around um, so it's not in your way. And basically what the Acurex toolbar can do is pick up the current um, patient that's been open in EMIS and send them an SMS. Um, so most EMIS practices across the country do use this already, um, so you should be very familiar with this interface. It's right now checking the consent codes for um, consent to receiving SMS. It's pulled through the patient's number, um, and then there is an input uh, field where you could then write a message to the patient. Um, it's also possible to uh, choose a template, so we have plenty of, uh, of Acurex um, templates that we've built that will then pre-fill and then let you edit that, um, or you can edit your own create your own template either for yourself or for your practice um, and to do that you would just click manage templates at the bottom of the menu here um, one of the really popular features with Acurex is this allow patient to respond once so let me just clear uh, the template um, so this allow patient to respond once will insert a um, response link that the patient would need to enter their date of birth uh, in order to to access and that's part of a security measure to put in place that in case the um, message came to the wrong phone number or the patient has changed phone number uh, that the correct patient should be able to access that that link um, and then you can write a message um, such as um, discussed on the phone please send a photo of your bruising and then you would send that to the patient uh, the patient see this message on their mobile if they have a smartphone they can click on the link um, and it would then open into their browser if they don't have a smartphone um, they could then type that link uh, directly into a computer um, in order to access it it comes up with uh, a introductory page once it loads there we go um, which just uh, introduces to the patient so here again the patient can see if it's not their name that maybe they wouldn't um, choose to proceed if it's the incorrect patient who's received that um, and if they uh, go forward then they can uh, enter their date of birth and so we'll put in Emma's date of birth uh, and then Emma would be able to answer the the question and attach a photo uh, if that's been requested so we have a couple photos that are available here to attach. There we go. So when the patient submits the form, a notification will come up on the Acurex toolbar. It might take a moment, but it came pretty quickly. So patient has responded to you and you can click to, to view that message. Now, this is something that we've uh, been working on quite a lot recently, um, how messages can be received and managed by a practice. And this is where we're going to look at some details of how uh, we can suggest that this can be uh, uh, improved upon uh, for your practice. So in a lot of practices, we hear that uh, if a patient calls up in the morning asking for an appointment and the receptionist um, can understand that there potentially is a, a physical um, side of, that, of their ailment, that it can be uh, good for them to request a photo even before they have a chance to, to speak to the doctor or the nurse. Um, and in that case, the receptionist would maybe send this message requesting the photo um, and the patient would respond, but the photo does come back to the person who sent uh, the request. So if I was a receptionist and I sent this, um, the photo would come back to me. But we have this new tool that lets you uh, change the assignment of a photo. So I want to reassign this to Dr. Vivek. 
he might even be online. Oh, he's not online. He's probably answering your questions right now. Um, so you can reassign that to Dr. It, it moves away from my inbox, but if I needed to find that for whatever reason, I could go back to the all folder. So we do have that, that, that safety net. And you can see in the all folder, here's that, uh, that message again, and you can see that it's been assigned to Dr. Bebeck. Um, we've also recently added in a special filter on the all folder so you could just see patient responses because we know that these are some of the most um, relevant messages uh, that a practice might be interested in looking at. And if, if, if I say, okay, um, Dr. Rebeck has reviewed it, he's happy with the, that, um, we're going to save that photo to the patient's record um, with the response. Um, and we can update the record so we can see what that looks like as well. Um, so that will, that will save into the consultations view of the um, medical record once that has a chance to, to connect. Um, what you can then do in order to help keep, keep the inbox tidy and to ensure that only messages that um, are new and have not yet been actioned um, have been taken care of, you can then press mark is done. So I'll wait until that to press mark is done. Um, the nice thing about using the done function, which is basically an archive function, um, is that you then are able to um, keep that box uh, tidy and that you would know that only these messages here have been unactioned or still require further action um, and therefore can, can, can be a, a cleaner view for the practice to look at. So I think it's still, there we go, saved to record. Might need to update the, um, the record again. Um, but it, it will save in, into the record and it will have that attachment there, which is saved into documents. Um, so you should be able to see the initial message that was sent, um, the response that the patient gave, and then the photo. Um, we do compress the photo um, when it is saved into the record, and that's obviously because of, uh, of, of storage space within EMIS, um, and, and we don't want to overload the medical record. Um, but you would still have access to the original resolution of the photo by clicking it in the Accurex inbox. So even if this message was then marked as done, um, I said I want to mark it as done, um, you would still be able to find that within the done folder. So you could see that, that message um, and you would still have access to the full resolution of the photo if that was necessary. Um, uh, and, and that would yeah, exist within that inbox. Um, another thing that I wanted to, to just uh, draw is a patient right here. So if you click on this, you'd be able to see all messages related to that specific patient. So you'd be able to, to see other messages that had been had been sent, um, uh, as well as other photos that had maybe been sent in or responded to. Um, and, and you could then kind of see the, the history of that communication with that patient. Um, Another kind of cool thing that I wanted to, to show that maybe not a lot of people know is even if you have one patient um, open in EMIS, currently we still have Emma open in EMIS, um, and now we're looking at, at this patient's response, which is um, Julie Adams, we can change them um, by, by, by clicking these three dots in the corner and then open that patient in EMIS web. So you should, and then that will change the, the medical record underneath. It might take a, take a moment to, to do so. Um, so that's a that's a, a nice feature that you that uh, maybe not everyone knows about, but is a is a good tool to have as you're going through an inbox and looking at different um, messages. Um, another thing that I wanted to to attention to, I think that's just loading. There we go. Now we have Julie Adams open, um, and we can we can do the same thing um, with this message. Is that we can we can save it to record, and it would save into the medical record of the correct patient. Um, and then you can also, of course, mark things as done or uh, make sure to process them in the appropriate way. That might be taking a little bit of time. So another thing I wanted to, to, to show is that we are in the process of rolling out an ability to um, send uh, video consultation messages via email. This is a request that we get because we know that um, a lot of patients maybe have a device that doesn't have a SIM card such as an iPad or a computer where they would like to conduct their video consultation. Um, and this is also has use cases in care homes where care homes would potentially have um, one device that they would walk around with um, to, to go from patient to patient. And it's kind of like a doing a virtual ward round. Um, so rather than having just this default of being able to send the message to the patient's phone, 
you'd be able to send it to the email. This is still uh, a, a feature that's being rolled out slowly, so not all practices will have access to it just yet, um, but we will be getting there, so uh, please be patient. Um, some things to note with email, email is very different than SMS. We, can, we do not have um, all of the consent codes for email just yet. Um, this could be something that we look at in the future, but currently it's not uh, something that we are able to verify. So it is the choice of the sender to decide um, that they do want to email the patient. Um, in many cases, if you've been on the phone with the patient and they've asked you to email, it makes complete sense. Um, we also aren't able to pull verified um, email addresses from the record just yet. Uh, so it is up to, to you to either get that from the record or to, to speak with the patient to be able to decide what email address to, to send that to. Um, otherwise, it works in the exact same way. So I will use my email address to, to send. Um, so you'd be able to send that message in the exact same way. Um, and it would then be delivered to the patient's uh, email. It does have a disclaimer about the, um, the email not being replied to. Uh, the, this is some, still something that we are working out. So again, why we're rolling it out slowly to, to really figure out all of the, the kinks before we go full. Um, but uh, the patient is then able to obviously join um, via their, their so they clicked on that link. They can then join, uh, sorry, via their, their non-SIM device. So via a uh, iPad or a tablet or a desktop. Um, you then also, as the clinician, can join in the exact same way. So you can either join uh, via the computer or in the way that we had it designed before. Or the clinician can also join via their smartphone in case they don't have the appropriate hardware, such as um, a microphone or a webcam. So they can join via their smartphone instead. So that's something uh, new and exciting that we're that we're working. Um, I just wanted to draw attention a little bit to our support center. So we have our Accurex Support Center online. It's support.accurex.com. Here you can find lots of articles about uh, different things that you can do within um, within Accurex. So here's an article about. Um, there's usually really helpful screenshots to use different things. Um, so. And here you can see that this has been linked to um, an article about reassignment. So you can click on that article um, and you would, you would also find out about reassignment, which is one thing that I that I demoed. So here we see even a, a GIF of uh, failed SMS and how to um, manage it between the dev folder and the open folder. And we have some circles here on, on how that works. So that's a that's a really helpful um, resource that you can use, and that we really encourage you uh, to, to 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 make the most of if uh, if you're not sure about how to do something in Accurate. Um, if for whatever reason that um, doesn't answer your question, you can always chat to our support via this little chat icon. Um, we have a really great support team um, that is able to to answer. Also, uh, help field some requests. or how we can further develop our products and features um, and provide a uh, better service for you. So I think that's it, and I think we're close to the end of time, so I will hand it back over to Izzy. Perfect, thanks everyone, thanks for joining.